Thank you so much, uh, and thank you for uh, being here. It did, uh, it's been quite the journey, and uh, they asked me if I would try to, to the best of my ability, take you through the 10 years of learning two, to how did we arrive here in Luxembourg today. So the journey started in 2007, and in 2007, most people probably remember this big announcement. The iPhone had just been released. And the world was talking about the idea of a new phone, while us in the international world were talking about Learning 2. Learning 2 was born by some educators. You will hear over and over again, this is a conference by teachers for teachers. And it started with two teachers, one at Concordia International School, Michael Weber, and one at uh, Shanghai Community uh, International School, John Zerflu. And together, they decided that they wanted to put on a different kind of conference. And so they sent an email out to the other international schools in Shanghai and said, we want to do something different. Will you join us? And I was working at Shanghai American School at the time, along with Simon May. And we answered the email, and next thing you know, we are putting on the first Learning 2 conference in Shanghai. The first conference was held at Concordia International School. We had absolutely no idea what we were doing. We absolutely had no idea how to run a conference, and we didn't know if anybody would show up. That was the biggest part. Like, when you put a conference on for the first time, will anybody actually sign up? And I remember we were about two weeks away from the conference, and I remember it like it was yesterday. We were sitting around counting the amount of money we had in our bank account to see if we had to cover the bills if nobody showed up for the conference. And luckily enough, people did show up. And it was a magical experience. It was incredible to watch teachers do something different. As educators, we know that we want to have student-centered classrooms. And our whole idea was, why don't we have teacher-centered conferences? And what would that look like? You know, at the time, the traditional conference, 50-minute sessions, a big keynote speaker, and you go home. And so we wanted to play with something different. And so one of the first founding uh, principles of Learning2 is the idea that we wanted to create a conference experience that puts the participant first. That was our first founding principle. And so this is the only remaining photo from uh, Learning2 2007. <laughs> And you have to remember that our, our cameras didn't have phones yet. I mean, our phones didn't have cameras. And so this is the only surviving photo from that first. And we were so excited, we survived the first conference. And right after the first conference was over, we all sat back down in a, in a room together, and we're like, do we really want to do this again? And we decided we would do it again. And in 2008, we ran 2008 um, Learning 2. And the logos at the time, of course, we had no money. So logos at the time were created by David Gran, who is a um, art teacher at Shanghai American School. So he created the first couple logos for us as well. So in 2008, we continue to move the conference forward, and the next principle emerges of Learning 2, and that principle is understand that learning is social act and make social a key part of the conference. What we started to understand is we were going to conferences, and some of the best conversations we were having were not in sessions, but in the hallways. <laughs> So the idea was, well, if that is where the good stuff is, how do we make that a part of the conference? And that is why social today is a massive part of this conference. That's why we have social nights last night. We have the big social kickoff on Thursday. We give you time to be social. We ask you to be social constantly throughout this conference because we understand that is where learning happens. So we go back, we do 2010, we skip 2009. 2009 is the only year there wasn't a conference. We were all tired. <laughs> Uh, we, you know, all full-time teachers, and we took 2009 off. Some of us started to move on. I had moved to the International School of Bangkok. Uh, John Zerflu had moved to become the uh, head of school in um, Russia. And Michael Weber uh, had actually retired back to Florida. So we took 2009 off, and in 2010, we decided to do it again. And we did 2010 in, uh, back in Shanghai. And 2010 is the year of the iPad. It's crazy to think that we're running a conference older than smartphones and iPads. And the iPad, you know, became like the first device that really started to make us think different. And we had to start thinking about what did that mean? And so in 2011, we tried something really, really crazy. And we said, what if the entire conference, there were no keynotes, we're not gonna invite any big names on stage, we're just gonna run it using unconference sessions and cohorts, that's it. And so this is Julie Lindsay, and we just had a table where you would go up and you'd write down any unconference session you wanted. We had unconference sessions on the wall. The entire cafeteria was covered in paper. 
And all we did was on conference, and then you would go meet with your cohort, you'd come back and get another unconference session and go meet in your cohort. The entire conference was laid out that way. And we found that we probably went a little overboard on the unconferences, but at the end, same time, participants were first. Participants' voices were heard. And there were some amazing conversations that came out of those, out of, uh, those talks. And so we decided that from there forward, unconferences would always remain a part of the conference. It also speared things like this, that when you're trying to get people to show up for your unconference, you have to do crazy things. So we had people dressing up. We had people on stage pitching their unconference sessions, trying to get people to vote for their unconference sessions. It was kind of a crazy wild party for sure. And uh, after 2011 then, we were, uh, again, started to disperse. We were getting tired and we knew something had to change. And so we started thinking about what if we create a conference that is ever-changing, takes risks, and uses technology in appropriate ways? And it's then when we were actually, uh, Madeline Brooks came to us and said, you know what, we would love to host this in Beijing. And we said, excellent, you can have it. <laughs> and so we move it to Beijing in 2012, and it's uh, hosted up there. That is where Mr. Sparkles is born. Uh, Mr. Sparkles is Simon's learning to name. It's where we find that he loves buses. And the students uh, at the school do a whole on-stage skit about Mr. Sparkles, uh, this teacher that's not willing to change. And so uh, Simon took on that persona for the rest of the time. In 2012, this is also where we have extended sessions. So now we have the idea of unconference from the year before. And we decided that we wanted teachers to spend a long time inside a session. So that's where the three hour long kind of extended session comes into play for the first time in 2012. It's also in 2012 where Kim Cofino, Madeline Brooks, Simon and I have our infamous taxi ride where we're like, we have something here and I think we can make this work. What does that mean and where do we go? And we, the four of us kind of came together and we said, okay, how do we continue to move this forward? What does this mean for us? And so we started then, that is the first time when schools could apply to host Learning2, and the next year we end up in Singapore. And we are starting to gain some momentum now. The conference has been around for four or five years. People are starting to talk about this feeling at Learning2, and I don't know if you felt that here, but there's like this feeling of community. There's something special about this conference that I don't get at other conferences. And in, in 2012, when we are in Singapore, that kind of all came to a head. We had, the conference was growing. We're at about 380, 400 people at this time. And there's something special when somebody's willing to get a tattoo of the conference logo. And this is actually Paula, who Mark talked about in the opening session here. And she was so moved by her experience as a Learn To leader um, that her talk was all about inking and that the tattoos of her tell her story. And she went out and she was so moved by her experience at Learning Too that she got a tattoo. There is something special about a conference when you're willing to put the logo on your body. In 2000, uh, uh, this 2013 then, we also, things are blowing up, and uh, at the, the last debrief of the conference, uh, I opened up my domain, I use uh, hoover.com to buy domain names, and we're sitting there, and we're like, what if we could have a conference everywhere? And so we literally bought the domain name all over the place. So we had Learning to Europe, Learning to Asia, we had no idea, we have Learning to Mars, we still own Learning to Mars. It is, it is one of the founding principles. We will hold the first educational technology conference on Mars. Um, yeah, we had learned to lead. We had all these different domains. A lot of them we've given up, but a lot of them we've also kept. We didn't know where this was going. So we wanted to create a conference that continued to change with the needs. In Singapore, little did we know that John Ingler from Ethiopia came to the conference. And at the end of the conference, he's like, I want to bring this to Africa. And we were like... <laughs> Okay, what does that mean? We've only ever run this in the Iricos region. At this time, Iricos is kind of funding the conference. So all of a sudden, we're like, well, if we're going to move it outside the Iricos region, what does that mean for us? So we start applying to become a nonprofit. So we are now a 501c3 nonprofit out of the States. And in Ethiopia, if you went to this conference in Ethiopia, you can get, it's the only place that there's a learning to safari vest. You can find it on eBay today for about $1,500. They are just prime... Uh, attire. But next thing we know, we're in, um, we're in Africa, and we kick off Africa. That same year, we're in Bangkok, so now we're running two conferences. We're running one in Africa, and we're running one back in Asia. This is the, the end of uh, Bangkok, when everybody was outside. In 2015, then, we run another one. We run one, actually, in South America, so we run our second one on the African continent. 
And at the same time, we run one in Manila. And it's in Manila and Singapore where we start bringing kids in. So in Singapore, we the first time we had students on stage, and we started having student workshops. And we expanded that into Manila. And uh, it was a real hit, so we, we continued with that part. Also in Manila is where we introduced the Innovate Strand, this idea of a conference inside a conference. And so that now becomes part of the conference. And hopefully what you can see here is how this conference has evolved over time and these little pieces that we've picked up along the way. In 2016, we run three conferences. Uh, we are the first one here in Europe. Thank you to Stephen and Carrie, who came to us and said, we want to run this in Europe, uh, and we'll have Milan host it for the first year. Little did they know that by hosting the first conference, you then become a part of the Learning to team and help everything. Um, I don't know if they knew what they were signing up for at the time, but they are, truly are the ones that helped to bring this conference to Europe and get it started here. At the same time, we ran one in Saigon uh, in Asia as well. And then this last year, in uh, school year 2017-2018, we were in Warsaw. And to make this thing full circle, this is John Zerflu, who helped start the conference, who is now the head of school at Warsaw, and also has come back to be on the board of the nonprofit and is now the board president. And so this whole thing now has come full circle to where we are. And so last, of course, last spring we were in Warsaw, and this fall we were in Shanghai for the 10-year anniversary. And so that brings us to today and where we go. And so that's the last decade of Learning 2. I don't know what the next decade looks like. I don't even know what the next big announcement of technology is going to be. But thank you for going on this journey with us. And our hope is, is that for the next decade, we'll be able to continue to innovate a conference that you want to come to as much as we did in the past. So thank you. <laughs>